why would I advise against cohabitation before marriage? There's plenty of evidence that it's a bad idea. Um, full of crap. Anybody that listens to Jordan Peterson, stop. He says a lot of nothing. The thing about Jordan Peterson is uh, you ask him what time it is and he tells you how to build a watch. He really, <laughs> he is a long-winded motherfucker. And that's a really interesting fact because it flies in the face of what you might think of as a kind of pragmatic common sense. Exactly. When he does these, you know, the cosmic and universal truths of, and this and that, and he does all of these words, he's just confusing you so that you don't, you, you to make it look like he's smarter than you and that you should listen to him. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? And I am excited, ready to rock and roll. What's going on, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh, WWDD, what would Dante do? All that good shit. Harry, what's going on? Oh, Dante, you know me. I'm trying to live the best life possible. If I was if I was any happier, I'd be Jordan Peterson at an incels convention. Oh, it's great stuff. Would- Oh, he would love for everybody. I feel like sometimes these guys who don't get laid, I feel so sorry for them. I feel so sorry. It's some, sometimes it's better when when people the people who don't have sex are thinking much more clear. Jordan, Jordan. he's been one of the definitive voices on this show. One of our things we, we've been doing, especially a lot lately, is always debunking these relationship experts out who are giving frivolous advice. There's a lot of relationship experts out there giving out frivolous advice. And Jordan Peterson is absolutely one of them. I mean, this has been going on now for years. And I don't understand how this came to be that he has def- he's become a relationship expert, but on social media, he's out there talking oh, yes. to him. Telling all kinds of stuff. Here's what's interesting. It's like, we've been doing this for 10 years and this guy comes in with his nonsense. What what he's saying is not even sound. He recently, Jordan Peterson recently did a, uh, he just does these speaking tours. And uh, and it's now his audience has become primarily like conservatives and religious folks. And yeah. one of the questions they asked him was why you should wait until marriage to move in together. Why you shouldn't move in together and you shouldn't be with each other before, shouldn't have sex with each other before oh, you're my. married. And why that's I, practical. I haven't, sound I haven't seen this clip, so I'm I'm, okay, I'm this excited. A, this is a fresh watch for you. I'm gonna pull it up. Here. I am I'm on bated breath right now. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can tell. Look at that sex pot that's asking him questions. Oh my goodness. Uh Ooh, she look at that little hot minx. My god. <laughs> she she definitely played some type of tennis in the 70s. Um I feel, I feel like she's got a Lizzie Borden haircut. Like she, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Lizzie Borden. <laughs> <laughs> Such a deep cut. Yeah, she definitely looks like uh, she was burning witches, uh, accusing deep, people deep of cut. witchcraft. Deep cut's pretty good for Lizzie Borden. Those yeah, who don't good. know Lizzie Borden, she was an axe murderer. Mm-hmm. But in the, like, I don't know, 1300s, well, 1400s. She, she was an axe murderer, but uh, she definitely wasn't a hot axe murderer. So not, no, like, no, no, no. not no, like the hot chicks murdering people today. Let's see. No, no. Back then, it was rough. It was <laughs> rough. All Your right, petticoat. Let's... Let's pull this up and let me know. You can hear this, right? Hold on. Cohabitation yeah. before marriage. Can, can you please elaborate on why you advise against cohabitation before marriage? Well, stop, stop for one second. Just want to show you what a pimp he is. Mm. You see this, this goofy jacket he got? Oh, this boy. split color jacket, <laughs> like that you, cross colors. <laughs> you, you, you mean the two face from Batman outfit that he's wearing? <laughs> the two face, two face, it's two yeah. face. He he's like, hold like, on, let's flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, let the coin decide your fate. <laughs> look at that goofy sex spot showing those ankles, that oh, whore. Boy. So why would I advise against cohabitation before marriage? Well, the simple answer to that question is there's plenty of evidence that it's a bad idea. And, and I just mean idea. factual yeah. evidence t- to begin with, al- although I think there are other reasons. Um, people who live together and then get married are more likely to get divorced, not less likely. And that's a really interesting fact because it flies in the face of what you might think of as a kind of pragmatic common sense, you know. Cause you- okay, so I'm gonna, this one I'm going to stop a lot because the thing about Jordan Peterson 
is uh, you ask him what time it is and he tells you how to build a watch. He really, <laughs> he is a long-winded motherfucker. He's um, full of crap. Anybody that listens to Jordan Peterson, stop. All you have to do is listen to what he says. He says a lot of nothing. And the whole point of him, uh, you know, let me, I'll go on my rant later. But one of the things that you have to understand that listeners, you got to understand, if you have somebody who's a mentor, right? You want somebody who is trying to communicate the information. You don't want somebody who is being elusive about the information because you're trying to learn. It should be as simple as possible. We all have a vocabulary. We all have things that we could say that make us look as if we're more intelligent. Than, but that's not the point. When you open your mouth, and this is something I think you should always remember, when you open, there's two reasons why you should open your mouth. Because you want to give information or get information. Other than that, shut up and listen. Mm. Mm. So when, exactly. when he does these, you know, the cosmic and universal truths of, and this and that, and he does all of these words, he's just confusing you so that you don't, you you to make it look, like he's smarter than you and that you should listen to him. Yeah. And so it's interesting because he talks about statistically. Um, I'll say this. I cut this short a little bit because, again, this is a 30 minute clip and he goes on. So the first thing is he says that statistically uh, it's less likely to stay together. You're less likely to stay together if you uh, live together before you get married. Right. You're less right. likely. You're more likely to get divorced. Uh, provides no proof of that in the sense of he doesn't right. list the statistic. Now, that being said, which is a little weird, but that being said, let's give him the benefit of the doubt that somehow that's true. That's that is and I, true. And while you're listening, to this, I'm going to Google this. this I'm going to Google this, this statistic that he what he's saying while we're okay. listening to this horse. You can try to debunk that now. But for the sake of for argument, let's just say that he's correct. Right. Let's say right. that. If you live together, statistically, you are more likely to get divorced, right? You're less likely right. to stay together. That's 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 lovely. Uh, are you happy, though? Are all yes. those marriages, are they happy marriages? That's the point. It's not that you stay together. Are you miserable as you're staying together? Because, look, our generation, it's all changing, but we have all grown up with family and things that everybody has that old aunt and uncle that stayed together until until they died together in the until they were 80. Who Listen, hated each other. I, yeah, I'm not going. I'm not leaving. If you don't leave, I'm going to I'm going to wait you out till you die. Women seem to suffer more emotionally as a consequence of sexual activity outside of a committed relationship. You can imagine why that is. Women experience more negative emotion than men on average in general, but also women pay a much higher. Now, we don't even know that's much true. Yeah, and that's like, um... this, is, this is the thing with him. He states these facts, and because he's got a two-tone suit, right, we're supposed to believe that that what he's saying is true. We don't know that to be the case. Now, here, here's an interesting thing. He's saying that it's known that uh, the difference is 40% to 43%, which is basically negligible. Uh, people who, 43% people are, are, have less satisfaction about marriage, Um if they cohabitate, 40 percent have less satisfaction who haven't cohabitated. Right. Mm. So it's a difference of about three percent, which is negligible. The study is also a telephone call. They did okay. it by a telephone company. Third of all, here's the thing. There's no constitution of the, the control pattern of how long are they married? So it could be newlyweds at two years. It could be people who have been married 40 years who have cohabited and stuff. So none of this. In other words, this study means absolutely nothing. But go ahead. Continue. Yeah. And again, but and again, oh, shit, just none of it talks about whether or not you're happy. Who that, gives right. a shit how long you're together? Who cares how long you stay yeah. together? What the numeric value is? Are you happy in the marriage? Right. We all know plenty of marriages. Where the guys are miserable, they got it. They go, oh, I got to check in with the old ball and chain. Right, uh, right. Happy, happy life, happy wife. You know, listen, uh, whatever, she, whatever she says, I just do it. You know, I don't know nothing. Right. It's not being happy. Those people yeah. are unhappy and miserable, but they're married. So Absolutely. what does that mean? What does that mean? Absolutely. Just, you have tenure. That's all it means. Yeah. Like you're in a union. But also women pay a much higher. Sex is much riskier for women than it is for men. 
Obviously. Okay, that I'll agree. We'll agree on we that. Don't have All right. To explain why that is. So, yeah, but Even you a, can explain everything else, you moron. Right. Yeah. Even at, listen, he's right about that part. Women, it's much more risky. I mean, oh, because, even if, because sex, sex ultimately brings childbirth and childbirth is 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 uh, is much more dangerous for men than it is for women. I mean, it's, it's women, just women than it is for men. Yeah. Childbirth is much more dangerous for women. Women also have, to worry, about, right. uh, women have to worry about assault and all that yeah. stuff. So, listen, he's right about that. Even a broken suit is right twice a day. So. And so women are often not for, women who are cohabiting are often less than happy about that. And the men who I've told by the way, just say living together. You don't have to say cohabiting. Just this is that's that's a primary example of him trying to use big words. Just say living together. We all know what it means. Yeah, no one is yeah. under the impression you don't be an elitist douchebag. He can't help it. He can't help that. The problem that men in general have with, with marriage is the fact that the laws are do not in any sense of not fair to a man getting married. If a man gets married and he gets divorced, he doesn't he the, the, the system is set up so that he, he doesn't always get access to the kids. How about this? If he has I, I uh, there's a clip that we should we could we got to get one day next. We'll get it for the next show. But this young lady who said that she had a guy who actually worked in a in a paternity place where they test test for paternity, and they and what they he was saying was that forty percent of the people that come into into um the, to, to get test their paternity to test to find out if they're they the father. And they don't usually get it because they want to prove that it's the father. What usually happens is somebody needs a kidney or there's a medical situation or something has to. It's not always just I'm not the father thing. And then they find out that this guy who has raised this child all of a sudden is not the biological father at the at the rate of 40 percent. Plus the fact plus the fact that if you have if you're not physically the, the father, the, the, the paternal father, you are still responsible for the kids uh, child support if you have started out paying because the government doesn't want to be burdened with the with the with the yeah. supporting of these kids. So even if it's not your kid, you get a paternity test, you still got to pay for that kid. Yeah. In a lot of circumstances, a lot of states, sometimes it depends on the judge. It, yeah. It's just a crazy system. And that's why men don't want to get married, not because it's because it, 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 it doesn't benefit. There's no ben There's literally no benefit, nothing but risk in yeah. that process. And then, you know, so he goes on in that section to talk about how uh, it's more it's not just the it's not just a piece of paper. It's a commitment. No. But a commitment is not facts like no. a commitment and faith and yada, yada, yada. That's not. That's yeah. that's not facts. And it is what it is. Sure. People stay together because they say it's cheaper to keep her. But the reality is it's cheaper to keep her because the laws are in place that make that so. So, you know, um, if you if you're in a situation where, you know, like women get married, they they you know, they'll have a guy with Tiger Woods. Or what was it? I, I forgot what Tiger Woods got millions, tens of millions of dollars. Dr. Dre's wife got tens of millions. Of oh, yeah. Dollars. His Tiger, Dr uh, Tiger Woods wife, his uh, his Tiger wife, Woods yeah. wife, who was an Dre, you know, like she didn't make a beat. He, she didn't she didn't sink a putt. And all of a sudden she's entitled to 50 percent of the of the of the, the thing. And then the whole thing is, well, that they are entitled to live the way that they were living before. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't have been living like if I wasn't so dope that we wouldn't be living in mansions, flying first, flying on private jets in the first place. So this is you've done nothing to do to, to, to earn this. If you love what we're doing here, go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. So, Dante, I'm going to uh, call an audible here and play a clip that you sent me just to give you an example of what it's like in reverse when mm. a uh when when a woman gets uh when when a man well, how am i how do i phrase this right when the woman is the breadwinner this is going to be the result of what happens to the man in the divorce process i'm going to pull that out that's uh if you remember the show sister sister yeah, uh, yeah. tia maori uh was one of the uh, one of the sisters she was one of the twins right and she just got hold on she just recently got divorced from her husband and right. I, they go over the alimony and everything here. And it's a pretty interesting example here. So I'm going to pull that up right now. 
just so we can what's, have what's it. Just so you know, interesting. I mean, the guy who she married is an actor, but Tia, Tia is clearly the breadwinner. I mean, she's not the breadwinner, but she definitely is the, the one that makes the most amount of money out of both of them. Or, you With, know, without a doubt. Without a doubt, but we'll well we'll look at the this is what the settlement is. Hold on, I'm sorry if I cut you off. Please finish. No, your no, 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 I'm done. And child support. Tia Mowry will pay zero in spousal and child support after settling her divorce with Corey Hardrick. The Blast reportedly obtained legal docs that basically stated that they agreed on a simple settlement that will allow each of them to help support their children together on an ongoing basis. They will share joint legal and physical custody of their two kids and split private school tuition, fees for extracurricular activities, and any cost that goes along with raising their family. Tia will keep the house they shared that is currently worth $4.3 million. The settlement also states, Okay, so that is something that would never happen if, if the situation were reversed and, reversed and he was the breadwinner. Right. Doesn't well, happen. Here's the, here's the, um, Here's the thing that I want to say about that. I don't really have a problem with this agreement if this was the agreement across the board. But the problem with the disagreement is that overall, most of the times, if the guy's got the money, they fleece him in every way possible to, to get him the, you know, they, he ends up paying money that he never thought he was going to pay. She ends up getting money that she never earned. So I really don't I don't have a problem with this other than the fact that the house, the the house is is I mean, I mean I'm assuming that the kids are living in the house. So right. as a as a as a man, you don't want to be you don't want to have a place where your kid don't, you know, first of all, to be honest, you want your side joint, your place anyway. So you could smash some puss. You know what I'm saying? You can <laughs> You can see. Yeah. Yeah. You want your little your your bachelor pad as they used you wanna, to say back you wanna, in the day. You want a place where you can stuff some gooch. You know what I mean? You wanna, yeah. Every once yeah. Why you want to stuff a gooch. So I get that. But but also the equity of the house should be split or there should be something compensated for the four point three million dollars of equity. If you're going to split it down the middle and both of you are going to take care of the kid. I have no problem. The problem is when the shoe is on the other foot, it just never ends, what, ends up never that way. Case. Now, I've heard also when I did the research, suppose there was a prenup and that's all well and good. Right. But look at what's going on with uh, Tyrese, who's, yeah. been, who's out there crying on camera because he has right. a prenup and she's still going after him with a lawyer. Yeah. For more, more money. Child support. And it's just never the other way around. But this is the example of why dudes do not want to get married. They just it has nothing to do with Jordan Peterson and his two tone suit. No. And this nonsense that is he's talking about and these cases and these studies that he's he's quoting inside. This is all it's all real. This is and this is one of the critiques that I've always had about Kevin Samuels and got no name above him. But uh, <laughs> our Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels, no name about that name, no name about that. Uh, name. But what one of the things is that he's dealing with the hard facts of the situation. He does deal with the logic, hard facts and the statistical differences. What he's not addressing is that relationships are not hard facts. People don't hook up based on a contract. They don't they don't hook up based on it's not like we need to. There's no standard rating of how hot you are compared to how much money. I mean, this is all arbitrary. And what happens moreover, because emotion is is an aspect of the relationship. None of it is is as cut and dry as as what he would say it is. Mm. And that is my critique. That is my one of my critiques. Now, I don't I don't deny that uh that what you call it, that that Kevin Samuels is right about his statistical. No, he's very uh, accurate. His stats are accurate. accurate. And his information is accurate and that perspective is accurate. But he sure. never did any didn't anything didn't do anything to fix any of that. Just right. said it never, was broken. Never offered solutions. Never no answers. And and never dealing with the fact that yo, I had a guy call me today. To hmm. this morning. Today I got a did a consultation this morning. And the guy told uh basically he was dating this girl. She said she had a boyfriend. He goes, you know, we could just be friends. So all of a sudden he starts liking her. And then he decides he don't want to be friends with her no more. Why? Because he don't want to be friends with her because why? Because he doesn't Sorry, want to. Did, I, did I make a phone call to you from uh, from 1998? Is this sounds like 
<laughs> something I would all the shit I would have done in high school. You did, you did. This sounds did exactly you... like me. Was it a little fat kid uh, with a with a crew cut? <laughs> No, actually, it was, was the skinny Mexican kid. So that's sorry, interesting. I just want to make sure. Jesus, I, but friend zone, goes sorry. to show you. So, but he, but he also was like, she has a boyfriend. She says, "Oh, we can hang out, such and such." But then he all of a sudden decided that he liked her, and because he liked her, he said, "Listen, I, I really can't be friends with you because I like you, and I, I don't want to. You know, it's 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 torture for me to hang out with you when when I know that I like you like this, and then." He called me up because he felt guilty. He felt guilty because of the fact that he didn't want to be friends with her anymore. Uh, and, and I'm like, man. what? I mean, what are we? You I've know, been there. I've been there. I'm not I'm not trying to make fun of this dude because I've been there. I was that guy. And you're because when you're a nice person, you have empathy for other people, even when they have zero empathy for you. It's it's astounding. And I'm not saying that she had zero empathy for him. I'm not even saying I'm not even getting into that. Maybe we, I, I could get into that. But the point is that his he was like, you know, I just feel like I played myself and I, I told her that we were going to be friends and now we're not friends. And I, yeah. And, and I was like, yo, you could change your mind. Just say I, I said to him, now, let me ask you something. If tomorrow she decided that the guy that she's dating is not because basically you have become in case emergency break glass, dude. You, you have become the emergency dude, you know, that you can change your mind anytime you want to. That's the great thing, because if this woman does, if this woman, she's got her boyfriend and all of a sudden she decides that this dude who's who's the friend zone dude is not uh, is not. A, a, the, no, if her man is no longer a viable entity for whatever reason and she wants to exercise her options, she will. She will cut him off and she will call my, call one of my clients up and say, yo, let's give it a shot. And and that will be just and, and her excuse. I mean, not that she owes anybody an excuse, but she'll be able to say, hey, yo, this is I this is how I feel. This and, is, I, and, I'll, and I'll say this for a guy who's had to learn how to stop being the nice guy. It's not easy and it does hurt because you have empathy for other people. Mm. But you also have to remember it's no different than if you're raising kids or when you have to make a tough decision. You know, I, right. I remember there was a relationship, uh, but at one point I had to lay down the atomic bomb of everything, mm. like everything that I had. Right. I, this is it. Either we right. fix all this now, I'm done with this, 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 and this, or it's over, right? right. And I felt almost sick to my stomach afterwards, yeah. even though I knew logically I was right. And I and it's been better since because of that. And I try to think of it as, you know, and I don't know, I you can argue the morality of this, but dropping the atomic bombs in Japan to end World War II. Right. Like, just because we did that and Harry Truman, the president, did that, I, I don't know if he was like, yeah, yeah, excited about it. You can yeah. still be upset and feel like, man, that dropping those bombs did save a lot more lives in this country. And, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe but not all, in the other countries, right? Not exactly. in the other country, but also around the world, because if this war kept mm -hmm. going, the more lives are lost. So the it's a long analogy to say, like, yeah, it's going to sting, but just because it hurts or you're that's what happens when you have empathy that's the downfall of being yeah. a good person is sometimes you got to make decisions that hurt other people even though it's the right decision to make well here, here's the other thing is you got to put yourself first because if you don't she won't so yeah. the empathy and the, the fact that your ability to your ability to provide and be a man and do like if your woman is not provided for if she's not happy with you we as a man unless you're a sociopath you take that personal you, because that's kind of what your job is. So if you, if I mean, it's it just naturally, but if you don't, if you don't looking to, if you're not looking to fulfill your own level of happiness so that you can continue to be a, a father and a husband and all these things that, that move forward, um, you, you, you're not going to do that. I mean, you, you, I mean, you're still going to not going to be happy, but you have to put yourself first because if you don't, she won't. And this I mean, kid and this kid would have been a situation where he would have stayed in the friend zone if it wasn't for your advice and your guidance. Yeah. And by the way, if people want consultations, Dante, how do they reach you just while we're talking you, about hit this? me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Or if you want Harry advice from Harry at gmail.com, you can hit either one of us. 
And we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll be there to help you the avoid these type of things because sometimes you don't know if, and nobody teaches because instead of teaching that you got the Jordan Peterson's of the world going, you know, it's probably better if you don't, if you don't have sex with your partner and you yeah. don't live together, that's probably a better idea. First of all, I've had, I, I was counseling a, oh, oh, this girl who wanted, she wanted to date. She wants to date. Well, she is dating a, a rapper, a famous rapper, but he's older and he's like, I, you know, I'm not like he basically he, he's been married twice. He's divorced twice. He has grown kids. She's younger naturally and she wants kids and so on and so forth. And she was like, well, I'm trying. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to make a commitment and da, 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 on and on and on. And, and what I'm trying to explain to her is that what you what you really have to understand is that you don't even know if you like this guy. Like, I get that you want what you can't have. But you, I said, what's the most that you've ever hung out with this dude? Like in his house, just hang out. With. And she was like, like 10 days. I go, you don't even know if you like this dude. It don't, it don't start getting real until six, six months in. Until you know, it's and even, every day and until you develop patterns yeah. and until the things in your life change. Because guess yeah. what? That might be a great 10 weeks. Everybody's yeah. got everything in order. Could be a know. great 10 months. Could but, be a great uh, two years. One you of know. you loses your job. The other one, something happens to the other one. The other one goes through a tragedy. That's when you see the real person come out. Yeah. And that's when you have to realize, like, this is what I have to deal with. And am I prepared to take this on? Am I prepared yeah. to deal with how they deal with trauma? How they yeah. deal with difficulties? How they deal with boredom? How yeah. they deal with just being yeah. comfort and everything when you're just staring at it? Can you just sit there and not yeah. have to, you know, because sometimes that's the thing. Where the excitement is great and sometimes yeah. the drama it kills the time. Yeah. What is it like when there's nothing going on and you're yeah. just there together? Yeah. But you wouldn't and know that because you shouldn't no. each other. You have to wait you until should, you, get you have to wait and see. It's going to be a surprise. It'll yeah. be a surprise like Christmas morning. I mean, there is a war on Christmas, but that's a whole other thing. Like he's right. a moron. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.